You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. You know, we do is that double header. You know who it is? It's our mega CEO, Comic Crusaders on the cover capes. Welcome, welcome to the Comic Crusaders podcast. Today, folks, I have an OG supporter of Comic Crusaders going way back. He's an amazing independent comic book creator as well, but even more so, an ill supporter of just the independent comic creation uh, market. Homie is all about the business, yo, for real. Uh, I'm very happy to, to have on, again, an early supporter. Like, I mean, I'm very honored to have him on. The one and only Omar Morales. Hey, <laughs> man, what's popping? What's cracking now, man? It's great to be here. I, th- I think you and I go back probably pff, almost 10 years, man, going all the way back to the early days with Comic Crusaders and then me launching my uh crusader comic book so we always had that that yeah man the crusader i still have that hardcover comic book over here you know right you know what i mean that was amazing you were definitely one of those early on so i thank you for that early support obviously you've seen our 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 growth but you know but not only that i've seen your growth i yep. mean you went from crusader to the moon girl Every every week, almost every day, folks, I get an alert because I follow Homie on Kickstarter too. Omar back, Omar back, Omar back. I mean, so my man is not just a creator, but he's definitely one of those people that believe in supporting the independent market. So again, I thank you for that. So you know, let, let people know just a little bit about yourself. Where you from, Homie or OG? All right, so my parents are are from Mexico, right? And I was born here in the U.S. I was born in Oakland, California, and have been pretty much in the area my whole life, man. I uh, live in the East Bay out in the suburbs now. Um, So, you know, I'm a Cali guy through and through, man. This is all I know, and this is what I love. But, uh, you know, came up in the world not not speaking any English, right? Just speaking pure Spanish in the home. And then... When I hit kindergarten, you know, the nuns up at the at the Catholic school were like, tell my parents, like, yo, you got to start speaking English. School. <laughs> so they started feeding me comics, right, and putting me in front of the TV to watch the old Spider-Man 1967 reruns mm. on, on the old, like, UHF channel, you know, back, back, back before cable, you had to get up to the TV and turn the dials like, like old Yeah, school. man. Before you, mo- you millennial kids, you don't know that journey. <laughs> Sometimes you didn't even have the dial. You had to put a wrench in that motherfucker to change it. So the dial would break off. <laughs> or or like you, the antenna wasn't quite right. You know, you had to you had to move the antenna, maybe put some foil on it, you know. Yeah, man, get that just... foil with that best signal. So, oh, folks, you guys don't know. that Your Omar, you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, that's how I came up in the world, just learning English through pop culture, right? Through comics, through cartoons, that's through awesome. Star Me Wars. Too through like you know nintendo old school you know 8-bit video gaming so you know i'm I'm, I'm no different than other uh, other kids that came up in the world in the 80s and, and 90s growing up with, with pop culture right and so now that i have the means to make my own comics uh that's what i do i i love making uh independent stories and uh and and like you said supporting the fellow indie community right I, you know i'm not throwing a hundred dollar pledge down on everybody it's you know five yeah. ten maybe fifteen but i like to spread it around spread of it course. around especially right. for the fellow latinos the that love. are out there hustling thank you, you. Know, I, I you know yeah and if if i can't do anything else man i'll maybe i'll share the campaign you know uh so yeah i'm out there you know trying to trying to spread the love as much as i can so what was it about comics man what, what was your first comic and, and, and what was it about it that that gave you that the, the virus, if you will? I'm like, yo, I love this. <laughs> I, the, the very first comic I kind of remember buying was uh, like issue number one of Spider Ham, not Spider Man, but Spider Ham. El Hamon. Yeah, El well, Hamon Araña, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, 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 you know, I used to get my comics at Seven Eleven, right? They had a spinner rack, right? With, it says Seven Eleven. I wish with, they still had comics. 
Yeah, and uh, they were all beat up and stuff. You know, there, there was no collector's market at that time, right? No bag and board. You just buy, buy it from the supermarket or from a uh, 7 Off the rack, yeah, man. Yeah, off the rack, and, and you could buy it with pocket change, man. It wasn't even a full dollar yet to buy a comic back in those yep. days. And I remember just kind of reading it on the way home. And I, I love gag humor and slapstick humor, so Spider-Ham was, like, right up my alley. <laughs> and uh, I, it just kind of opened my eyes to, like, Dang, you can take a character and change it, make it different, yeah. make make it funny, or you can make it more serious, you know. And uh, at that time, you know, there wasn't a lot of that going on. You know, there was no Miles Morales, right? It was yeah. Spider Ham was the first, like, you know, variant, different, if you will, yeah. <laughs> different, yeah. It's the first POC Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, right. Uh, the the first kind of uh, alternate universe or ultimate yeah. version, whatever you want to call it, man. And so I I was hooked on it, man. And uh, you know, of course, the the cartoons and you know, back back in the day, like on those old UFA channels, they used to have these like uh like the the Asian channel, like at six in the morning on a Sunday, would have like the the cell by cell animated Marvel, like the old okay. Captain America, oh yeah, old, yeah, old, old, old Thor, you know, where yeah, they were yeah. just like. Moving the lips, but it was just a still shot, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Jack Kirby art, though. I mean, you exactly. can't even go wrong, son. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that stuff was dope. So that, that's that's how I got sucked in, and then you know I started collecting bag and board as a as a young kid, and then as a high school student, and then uh, you know at one point I lost interest and sold all my comics. But then oh, after wow. college, once I started making some money, then I started buying it all back. You know. So what on. made you come back? Honestly, man, like uh, Marvel started just going large at the movie theater, dude. Like the X-Men okay. came back in 99. Then here comes Spider-Man in like 2002. And that just got the love going again, okay. got the juices flowing again. And so I started going back into the shops every Wednesday and then shopping for the old stuff that I got rid of back on eBay. And so then eventually I was like, you know what? I'm a writer, you know, by trade. I studied journalism, advertising, PR, communications in college. You know, I'm creative. And then after college, I got my first jobs in TV news. I started doing a lot of camera work and editing. That's how I learned to tell a story visually, right? Like framing, okay. angles, you know, long shots, uh, depth of field shots, close-ups, pacing, right? Telling a story within 90 seconds. And so I applied all those skills into making uh, making my first comics. And I started with just Crusader number one, a 22-page one-shot and then it did pretty well at, at WonderCon, so I figured I'm going to blow this up to a graphic novel. And then my next thing, Moon Girl, very similar. It was a short story, 10 or 12 pages in an anthology, and then I figured, all right, I'm going to blow this sucker up into a full like 88-page graphic novel. That's how I like to test things, right, with the short stories, yeah. to see if people like it, see if there's a good reaction to it. And right now, the project I'm working on, Major Tomas, is about a Latino astronaut who gets lost in space. Same thing. I started with a 10, 12 page uh, anthology in an in a anthology called Manana. I don't know if you've heard of it. It raised like Manana, 75. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Manana has made 100% of Latinx, you know, Latino and Latino really? art, artists, writers, colorists, letters, 100% Latino. And it funded last year on Kickstarter. It was like 75 grand we raised. It's like a 200 wow. page. 200 page book, massive book. It's uh, gonna well, start. Okay. I, I'm, I feel I'm offended now because if it was any of the group, I think we, I, I would have gotten some press releases and all that, but I got nothing. Dang. Well, I wasn't in charge of the campaign, but uh, uh, if I'm ever in something like that again, I'm going to hit you up on the side. Please. Yeah, I want to support me, gente, too. But I mean, listen, <laughs> Comic Crusader supports everybody, but obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, right, being right. Latino, right. I definitely want to help our, our community, too. And, and I, I feel hurt now that I even know. And there you go, at least, AK La Tigresa, Wepa, se salute. <laughs> yeah man so uh, that's crazy though now, now i feel bad now damn i wish i i knew that sounds really amazing you said the book weighs 75 pounds no no it's uh it's like a two, <laughs> 200 page book i don't know how much it weighs but it was pretty thick and heavy uh yeah. there's going to be an english language and then there's going to be a spanish language translation but you know what al i got you because my short story from there major tomas it's the first story in the whole uh Mañana anthology it's the lead oh, story word. but I'm taking that story and doing like I do. I'm going to take those 12 pages and make it into a 106 page graphic novel. So be on the lookout for that within the next couple of years. Uh, oh, my man, wow. my man, my man, Sergio Acuna from Costa Rica is doing the artwork. Really? I, oh, I'm yeah. familiar with his work. He's a mm -hmm. boss, huh? Dude, How'd you he, land at him? Uh, we just started becoming friends, you know, on online and started talking. And I said, Hey, I got this project. I think you're perfect for, um, 
And at the time he was busy, but he said, if you can wait a little bit, you know, we can do this. Yeah. And so I got real professional and sent him a contract and said, here's your down payment. Here's your, you know, benchmark payments. And uh, we worked it out. And then his homie is going to do, you know, the colors, Raul Angulo. He's also from oh. Costa Rica. Wow. Yeah. It's going to oh be my dope, God. man. You're teasing hardcore here, bro. <laughs> and, and then and then the lettering, even better, uh, Taylor Esposito, uh, our man from really? Argentina. He lives in uh, New Jersey. Oh, we and know so, Taylor. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So so it's going to be 100% Latino. The Major Tomas graphic novel is going to be keeping it real, dog. Oh, I love that, man. Again, you know, not having that growing up and even now, I still mm -hmm. we still don't get that, to be honest, That's right. even now. That's right. That's I right. mean, yeah, everybody talks about our diversity, but they always forget us for some odd reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How do I you feel, feel about that? Is that a real comment? Am, am, am I missing something? Am I crazy? I mean, are, are we not getting serviced, really? Because, you know, well, diversity is everywhere, yes, but I really don't see us amongst this talk. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, man, because I, I don't know if you remember, like, I don't know how long ago it was, 10, 15 years, there was that Lacey Peterson murder, right? Out mm -hmm. here in Modesto, California. You know, oh, the army joint, right? Um, that one? No, was that she, one? Was like, she was a pregnant lady, right? And her husband oh, okay. killed her. And oh, okay, her. okay. Yeah, like, I think sense. he drowned her in the pool, and then, like, he dumped her body Great out shit. in the, the, yeah, the well. Berkeley Marina, and then her body washed up later. Anyway, what's funny is I was watching the news, like, maybe a month or two later, and they were saying that there was a, a story just like that, just like that, except it was a Latino, Latina lady, right? Yeah. Same thing, right around Christmas, right around the same time, pregnant lady, husband killed her, disappeared. No yeah. news coverage, no news coverage. No one's ever even heard of that lady. But Lacey Peterson was national news for like years and it's still national news still, because now yeah. the husband's like trying to get out of jail or whatever. So... So I hear what you're saying, man, and uh, you know sometimes it hurts. It hurts that we we get overlooked. Yeah, yeah, but ho hopefully we'll keep making waves because you know you you are. I mean that book sounds fantastic with the team you have set up. I mean no one can deny how awesome that team sounds. Um, well, you so, know what, Al? Even if the publishers tried to deny, I'm a, you know you know how I do. I'm gonna do it yeah. myself. I'm gonna put it out there, high quality. You know, nice, nice hardcover, nice lamination. Oh, look know, at that! Look at that! He's showing professional. off. Folks, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So why that route, man? Why are you so passionate about this, brother? What what, what is it about comics and, and your passion to to create? You know, where, where does it come from? Where does it stem from? And, and why so so energetic on it? Yeah, man. Um, first of all, I'm just a natural storyteller, right? Like, you know, my dad uh, was always kind of a natural storyteller himself, too. He was more of a jokester. My dad loved getting in front of people and telling jokes. I'm not so much of a jokester, but I, I love telling fictional stories. I started writing my own little comics when I was a little kid. You know, I take okay. a binder paper, fold it in half, staple the spine, started drawing, you know, the little drawings and the, you know, the, the panels. And, love you know, it. I just just start, you know, I wasn't a, a super good artist, but I was creating, man, and I enjoyed it. And um, and what, right now what fuels me is, and I get a lot of this from my dad too. My dad's a big believer in that, you know, and we were talking about this before off the air is that we're not alone, right? There, there, there's going to come a time where, you know, a, a, an alien civilization is going to reveal itself. And <laughs> yeah. I love, I love science fiction, dude. I love the question, what makes us human? human what does it mean to be human and i get super yes. inspired by that question and i love exploring that in my books all of my books have some kind of angle on that right some kind of science fiction maybe a little bit of supernatural but for the most part it's it's sci-fi and the potential we have as a species to oh, kind yeah. of cross pollinate and germinate ourselves out into the cosmos and i, oh, I yeah. love that man that's what gets my juices flowing and thinking about <laughs> that that question right why are we here? Who made us? Like, where are we going? What What's the point of all this? Right. That that's what just gets my gets my energy up and and gives me the fuel to create. How do you feel about that new find, that archaeological find of that almost missing link of those bigger humans that are even mm -hmm. older than us? Mm -hmm. I mean, did you see that news, bro? Has, it, has that inspired anything new? <laughs> I, I saw the headline, and uh, I'll tell you what, man. I, I watch a lot of that show, uh, Ancient Aliens. On, oh, me too. On I History love it. Channel. Right, I love it too. It's kind of ridiculous, but I still love it, right? Yeah. And so, I, I, don't have, I don't have that much hairspray to do that type of hairdo, <laughs> but yeah. 
<laughs> so, so they have this theory that once upon a time, giants walked the earth, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they did this story about one of them that supposedly survived hundreds of years later. He was this giant, like nine foot man with red hair yeah. and a spear. And so I put that, I put that little Easter egg into the moon girl oh! book. This is prehistoric Earth, right? It's part of the story takes place prehistoric Earth, and there he is, man. He's the giant with, with red hair and a spear. This book, by the way, Moon Girl, which is which has now been retitled The Lunar Ladies, selling under Scout Comics, uh, has loaded loaded with ancient alien theories, right? There's little Easter eggs that I drop in the background that have theories from that show that the yeah. hardcore fans of ancient aliens, you know, will 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 recognize and and something a little something special for that crowd just in that book. I dig the, the, the shit out that show, man. I, I, I'd be screwed up. You know, my wife just leaves. She's like, this is sounds, this sounds insane. I'm like, until it happens. <laughs> right, right, right. Or has Yo, it already but, happened? Or has it already happened? Right or is it going on? Going yeah, on that right too. Now. I that mean, too. you know, we never know. I mean, again, the world is wide, right? We don't know what really is going on. We We don't have eyes on everything. And Unfortunately, you know, media is controlled, so things are manipulated. So who knows what what truths we're really seeing and the when. We're starting uh, our own Latino X Files right here, bro. Yes, that's just right, right. The, the, <laughs> we'll, we'll call it the LX Files. <laughs> but th think about how deep the ocean is, man. And we only go like this, 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 that, this far a, down. Exactly. This far I down mean, is how far we can go, and it's like you know, it goes down. So what's down there? What's down that, there? <laughs> alien doesn't mean just from above, boy. That's let me right. Tell you. That's right. It can come up from the water. Yeah, we never know. We never know. Shit, maybe we, we're the aliens. Well, again, we're the bacteria destroying the Earth. But again, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> well, he, he, here's the thing, right? When they put the astronauts up in space, they find out that their natural clock is actually 25 hours, not 24 hours, right? The natural mm. uh, biorhythm and the the I forgot what they call it, the cadence, the okay. it is is for 25 hours. And it just so happens, I think that Mars is a 25 hour day, not a 24 oh, really? hour day, something like that. Right. There's something to this, right. That our bodies revert to the way we're supposed to be when we're out in space and that our bodies are not naturally meant for this earth. Meaning we came from somewhere else. Ah, we germinated from yeah. elsewhere. That's huh. right. Tra Transpermia. Yeah. Because I, I can't believe that if we were a smart alien species that landed here, that we landed here and just became stupid. Right. Or or maybe we were stupid and somebody else came and messed with our DNA to make us smart. Who knows, Al? The, 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 the possibilities the variance. are variance. I love it. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> this type of conversation, God, please don't make me smoke a blunt and sit down with you and talk about this. It's a, It'll be a wrap. We're going to be here for hours. You know what I mean? No, oh, but yeah. that's great. That's right. So, so but th those creative endeavors such as Moon Girl and Crusader, they're, they're amazing, mm -hmm. bro. And I mean, whether you really dig deep in, though, when it comes to creation and creativity where do you dig to to you know write you know where's that and, space come from yeah i get i get a lot of uh, influences right so crusader you know was heavily influenced by my upbringing in catholic school right that's a, a like a catholic hero that looks like a monk that has you know the spear of Christ is his main weapon that has supernatural powers, sure. right? But then, but then I also had to throw aliens into the mix in that story, right? I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, know. Yes, you know, <laughs> obviously, obviously, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, all those are, are big influences. Uh, you know, video games like Metroid. I love Metroid, man. You know, okay. badass bounty hunter exploring the galaxy. Uh, and, you know, Ancient Aliens is a big influence on me. History Channel in general is a big influence on me. Like when I see shows about the Nazis were into the occult and the Nazis knew more about, you know, supernatural or That's science fiction. That's some wild shit that they were into, boy. Let me yeah. tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were really ahead of the curve. Fun. I mean, doesn't it sound so comic bookish, though, that this is in real life and mm -hmm. this is what they were believing and looking into? Like, yo, this is real life. This is not comic books, folks. This is, comic book life became real for, for an era. <laughs> As uh, uh, the great director Steven Spielberg once said, he said, I did Close Encounters of the Third Kind, not because it's science fiction, but because it's science fact. <laughs> Bro, it's funny you say that. One of my fellow crusaders, you know, uh, was talking about that film and I actually started watching it just yesterday, rewatching. Mm -hmm. And I watched him like, wow. I mean, 
right now, people watch this film. It'll kind of blow your mind the relevance of it, especially yes. with today's conversations. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like that thing about them taking like some volunteers from Earth back up into the mothership. Like the the characters are based on real people, right? There's like a French scientist in there. He's based yeah. on a real guy. And Steven Spielberg, according to him, had all these inside stories about how all that stuff was real. Of course, he dramatized it, you know. But yeah. but the base story is is real, according to him. And that that stuff fascinates me, man. Or you know, even stuff like you know, old biblical paintings. If you look in the background, sometimes you can see like a little UFO floating around in yeah, the background and that's of a religious wild, painting. Bro. That's wild. That is right. really effing wild. I've seen those pictures. Then I be like, nah, they're messing around. And I start looking in the nets and I'm like, okay, wow, all right. This is from the <laughs> actual place. And this, this really is there. What the F were these people seeing at that time? And, you know, for me, you know, being religious and believing in God doesn't conflict with that belief of aliens at all, man. It's like, you know, if there's a master creator, why couldn't he create all kinds of flavors of, of different beings? Yeah, right? well, the argument goes into the, that one line of, you know, that, that we were made in, that, in their image. So if something mm. comes here and it looks mm. different than mm. where we are, that's the conflict. Like, wait a minute. I thought we were made in a homie's image. Who are these? Yeah, things? right, right, right. Or yeah, maybe whose image they know, made of? Right, or maybe they made us to fit whatever image they want. I don't know, man. But it's fascinating to think about, and I love and it. Really, that's that's where I dig deep when I'm making my stories. Right, like the state, the story I'm working on right now, Major Tomas, about the the uh, Latino astronaut who gets lost in space. He encounters AI beings. He encounters aliens. Right, and it's all about how can he communicate and get along in order to find his way back to earth, right? He's got to dig deep himself to find a solution because he's lost in space. He's got no way back and he's got to, he's got to figure stuff out. He's got to grow up on fast, right? He's got to do things differently than he's ever done before in his life to try to find a solution. And it's, it's really got a lot of heart in it. A lot of human touch, if you know what I'm saying, like even the robots and the AI characters and even the aliens, they they behave more human than human, right? As like that old saying from Blade Blade Runner that the replicants are more human than human. Yeah, you know it's got a lot of uh, emotion in it and a lot of deep questions that that get asked. You know, through the course of action, right? It's it's an action adventure story, but it I've, hopefully it makes you think and gets your wheels turning about you know what does it mean to be human and what is the future of humanity out when we finally go out and, and conquer space. Good. I mean, the, the homie just keeps coming up with stories, and I like that. So, <laughs> you did you purposely want to make the 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 lead character Latino? Oh man! Not only is the lead character, but like all the homies and homegirls in the book are Latinos, right? <laughs> awesome. it, like it, you know, the the woman he loves, she's she's Latina. She's a def descendant of, of the mighty San Patricios. So the San Patricios were like oh, these wow. Irish soldiers in, Me in in Mexico that were fighting for the U.S. But then they identified with the Mexicans because they were Catholics. And so they switched. They turned and joined the Mexican army and fought against oh, wow. the U.S. And they stayed in Mexico, right? The, all that red hair and Irish culture, it stayed in Mexico. And so to this day, in a certain part of Mexico, there's people with yeah. red hair and freckles. And so I wanted to tell that story in this story. So I made her, the, the woman that he loves, a, a descendant of them. Therefore, she has red hair and freckles. But like oh, the parents... Okay. All the farmers, because they live in a farming community, you know, like the head of NASA when it becomes an astronaut, she's Latina, right? So I, I just peppered it with, with brown people of all shades, of all shapes into this book. And of course, there's other people too, right? You got your white folks, your black folks, your Asian folks. They're all up in there too. But the main centerpiece is, is, is Latinos. Thank you, man. Again, something that I didn't see growing up. I appreciate it. I mean, outside of White Tiger, but then I met a creator at New York Comic Con. He's like, man, I, got... I mm. understand Marvel want to show us that White Tiger. Well, when the fuck you seen a White Tiger in PR? <laughs> 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 that was his answer. It's like, I don't like that shit. You know, like, you know, that, that's what... I'm like, what are you going to call him? El Coqui? Really? Come on. <laughs> you know, white tigers are just rare in general, right? Like yeah. you, you hardly ever see one anywhere. But yeah, man, um, I, I really wanted to do this book with 
100% Latinx representation, man. I the artists, that. the coloring, the, the lettering. Um, even some of the, the cover artists I'm hiring are, are also Latinos. And so I've got a lot of pride. I've got a lot of pride in this book. And I, I'm sure hey. it's going gonna, it's gonna to come through when people see it, when people read it, right? Like, there's just little things, you know, just like that little story I just told you about the mighty San Patricios, you know, that stayed in Mexico. There's little threads like that in the book, right? Just little things that people, I hope, will appreciate, things that are real and true, you know, true to the heart. So thank you, Al, for giving me the platform to talk about that. I'm very proud of it. No, but I feel proud. You know, I, I'm not even a part of it, but I hope to be a part of it, it's part of that Kickstarter or whatever we're going to do here because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is great at the end of the day. As I've said, I haven't seen this. I've been had that growing up. You know, I've appreciated platforms again because Spawn's my favorite character. He happens to be, you know, African American character, right? Um, growing, what did I really have growing up as a, as a Latin or Latino representation? What vibe? <laughs> you yeah. know, White Tiger got shot once he got in color in Spider Man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of course, the Puerto Rican gets shot in New York by cops at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The brown you know, people so, are usually the first ones to die, right? Like, yeah, you know, you know we don't get movie. that. And I wasn't really doing, you know, Marvel DC at the time that Miles came out, to be honest. I did stop myself for a while. You know, I just kept going on with Spawn because I have every issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, what got me back into it was when Dreamwave came out with the Transformers. Mm. You know, based on the G1s, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Transformers. <laughs> that yeah. got me back in, in, into the swing of things, if you will. And then I refound Indy all over again in comics and kept going forward. That's funny. I, I was reading this book uh, the other day. It was a very well-known graphic novel that got turned into a TV show, right? And it features... Uh, you know, black people, Latinos, Asian people, white people. And then I started looking at the creator list. Yeah. White guy, white guy, white guy, white guy, white guy. Like five white guys made this book. And yet they're writing stories about all these ethnic minorities in the Bay Area. And I was like, I mean, cool. Like I, I give them credit for, for trying to mix it up. But at the yeah. same time, I'd like to see some people of color in there. I'd like to see some women in there contributing to a story where everyone's represented. Yeah. So that was a, a big motivating factor for me, too, in assembling the team that I've, I've assembled for, for Major it, Tomas. It's, it's a much more natural voice when it comes authentically yeah. to the community that's being spoken about. Not right. to disregard the talent that's writing. You know, I mean, may, maybe you grew up, you know, in a community like that, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's Latino or Black or mixed or whatever, you know, so maybe you, you know, because you grew up in that community, you may feel in tune. But, you know, coming from our, from our perspective at times, you know, seeing it like that and it's like, OK, well, maybe you should have had a co-creator that was also the same to bring a little bit more sasong. If yes. You know, to, to authenticity. Uh, bring the spice. Like, you know how it goes. <laughs> in, your, in your case, some salsa, some pique, you know. Yeah, right? yeah, man. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a pique fan. Oh my God, bro. What's the hottest sauce you ever tried? But listen, I, I offended a white boy when I said that as a Latino, I'm not a big uh -huh. fan of, of hot sauce. Uh -huh. It's not my thing, bro. Like, it just can't. It fucks up food for me. I can't. My taste buds are not meant for it. But I know, you know, you say you, you, you come from Mexican descent. You know, mm -hmm. are you a fan of hot sauce? And if so, what's the hot sauce that we should all try? Honestly, man, the sauce I like is not even really that hot. It's called El Pato. It comes in cans, right? And you, okay. you, you marinate your, your shredded chicken in it for, for tacos, and, and yeah. I love it, man. But the hottest sauce I've ever had, dude, like, like 20 years ago, I went on a camping trip with my boys, and they tricked me, dude. They said, hey, try this, try this hot sauce, man. And it was called Dave's Insanity Sauce. And like when it first hits you, it doesn't feel like nothing. Then after like four yeah. or five minutes, your head feels <laughs> like it's going to explode, man. I was sweating. And the only thing you could do is drink milk, right? You, like water's I, not good, beer's not good. Like you got to drink milk to, to try to calm it down, fun. dude. Man, too that fun. was crazy. So I, yeah. I've never gone back to that style of hot sauce ever again. Like, nope. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you know who Joey Diaz is? Uh, no, it doesn't sound familiar. He's a comedian. You know, he's he's worked with Joe Rogan and all. To okay. Right? Okay. Sometimes. So Joe Rogan's big on the aliens, dude. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> But let me tell you, Joey Diaz is not big on milk. 
He says that why would anybody want to drink a liquid that smells like dick? <laughs> Those were his words. I swear to God. But then uh, he then he goes and turns and said, "But I I love me a milkshake. What the fuck? I love milkshakes. I love chocolate milk. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Oh, you're a I'm chocolate down. milk fan, yo. Me too. I'm oh, bad dude. with cho- that Dutch chocolate milk with that rich chocolate, bro. Oh my god, it's, it's banger. A banger. Dude, the best brand for me right now is called Fairlife. It's thick and it's creamy, but yet somehow it's still low calories, right? Like a glass oh. is only like 140 calories, but Say it's her. thick and rich and creamy, dude. <laughs> Fairlife chocolate milk. You see us folks, you know, we, we two very like Monday Latinos, apparently, because I love me chocolate milk, boy. <laughs> me too. My wife lies at me, like, yo, who the fuck drinks all the milk here? It's me with the quick and shit. But if I could get me a fair life or something for real, bro, uh, I'm all no, about no, it. Go hit it up, man. They got it at Target. <laughs> it's too funny. Your target's right across the street. Don't mess with me, bro. I'm about to spend up. some money. So <laughs> So Omar, so what what's up with with your current project now? Is this something that's currently a Kickstarter coming to Kickstarter? What, what what's popping off with it? Uh, Major Tomas right now is like in development, right? So okay. so the script is done. Surge is banging out the first like pages right now. Like I think we've got seven done. Okay. And and what I'm doing is having Raul uh, Raul Angulo do the colors, and we're gonna take those six first six pages and we're going to pitch it out there. You know, we're going to pitch okay. it out there to some publishers. And, you know, if they take a pass, that's okay. If they don't quite get it right, maybe, maybe they think it's a little too Latino. Hey, it's all good. I know what I can do. <laughs> I've, I've been funding on Kickstarter. I've, I've done my own projects. And like I said, I support the community enough where hopefully they give me the love back and then well, I can I publish it on my own. But what's great about scout comics who uh, is publishing. Uh, yeah, they're really great. The Lunar Ladies, right, which used to be known as Moon Girl, um, they're good about like letting the creators do a Kickstarter first and then come to Scout second, right? So I can potentially, you know, launch Major Tomas on my own under my own label and then do it with Scout and 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 get a bigger, broader audience that's different from the Kickstarter audience. So that that's one of the great things that I've learned about this industry is there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? The, like dark, dark horse and image are not the only game in town, right? There right. are so many out there, you know, boom, Love aftershock, you know, dynamite, uh, aftershock, vault, you know, exactly. Vault, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and scout, right. Which is unique yeah. in, in how they do things. They're very Kickstarter friendly. They're very creative. AWA. Friendly. AWA, right? Like all these guys, humanoids. Yeah, uh, H1, um, man, absolutely. Uh, my boy Kevin, Kevin Parent, he just got a deal with Source his own point imprint. Too. Oh, really? Source point. Yeah, but he's got his own imprint called Happy Tank. Um, oh, yes. I, I got the press release on Happy Tank. Very yeah, nice. Congrats, yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, good stuff for him. Yeah, exactly. He's a good friend of mine. So that could be an avenue. So at some point, I, I do see this project being published by somebody else. It just so happens that I might publish it first, just under my own label. Why not? But, you know, hey, either way, the, the message is going to get out there. And I know my man, El is going to help me amplify that. Message. Absolutely. Absolutely. Comic Crusaders is at your service, my friend. And <laughs> got to do ask, though. That Moon Girl and then that name transition was that related yes. because of the Marvel character? Because that was under the impression that the name Moon Girl was on the public domain because there was it another was, Moon Girl in public domain. Yes, you're absolutely right. 100% right, Al. It was 1947. EC Comics made the first version of Moon Girl. Yeah. And then many years later, like in the two, early 2000s, Red 5 Comics revived her and did Moon Girl and yeah. did her as like a super spy ninja type of character. And more recently, uh, Marvel uh, did Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. And so I think because that book is still active in the market, Scott wanted to play it safe and say, let's not have any confusion between Moon Uh, Girl that Omar has written. And even though it's a public domain character and it would have been perfectly fine, they think it would hurt sales if there was confusion. So I said, no problem. Um, And you know what? It's fair. A fair assessment. Yeah. I said, if that's all you're asking me for, no problem. Let's rename it the Lunar Lady. So issue one drops like in 10 days, Al. Issue number one drops in comic shops July. I think it's July 17th, I think, is the, the right date. Maybe the 15th. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Because we know it's a Wednesday. Yeah, we know it's so, a Wednesday. At, well, you said 17th. No, it should be the 14th or the 21st. Which one? I think it's going to be the 14th. Yeah. There we go. 
in two weeks. Oh man, that's that's yeah. not this Wednesday, but next. Eva. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's then, nice. Well, I'm so happy to issue see Issue two, issue two will drop two months later because Scout likes to spread them out two months apart to give the shops yeah. a better chance of understanding the demand and how much they should order. Okay. So uh, issue two will drop in September and then issue three will drop in November. And th this is the cover of uh, issue number three. Uh, Ooh, this is uh, by Matt, Matt Harding. He's a good friend of mine. Did the, uh, put it up cover. again. Put it up again. So I put you on the big screens because look at look at look how sexy. Yep, uh, <laughs> look at that dressing, folks. Don't get wild now, folks. Yeah. Look nice. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, that book, Lunar Ladies, is kind of uh, ages ten and up, right? It's more friendly toward toward kids. Um, but you know, adults can get something out of it too. Like I told you, Al, I, I dropped some ancient alien Easter eggs all throughout the book, so I know there's something for you in there, as well as you know, kids coming up in the world wanting to read an old-fashioned science fiction book that got the Buck Rogers feel, right? Ray Peace guns and la Rogers. laser rays. Wow, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I so, love it. Old school stuff. That was the good stuff, innocent days. Because yes, you know, we come from that generation that was the in between. We're the in-betweeners of tech and real life. You know what I mean? Let's show that off, kiddo. Look so, at that. Oh, so, man, look at that art, kiddo. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, son. it's really old-fashioned. And the color artist, Paula Goulart, she's from Brazil. She, like, stained the pages so that they look like they're 100 years old, right? So they look yellowed and faded, and they got little oh, stains. Nice. And she did it all by hand. It's not a filter, right? She stained everything by hand so oh, that the wow. pages look yeah, what I wanted for people to, to feel like when they opened up the Lunar Ladies or, or Moon Girl uh, is like is like they found a, a comic in their grandma's attic that's been sitting there for 100 years collecting dust. That's kind of the, the sense and the vibe and the feel that I wanted to, people to have, right? So I put thought bubbles in there. It's got the old-fashioned ray guns with the little, you know, the little circle tips and pew, pew, and like all that kind of stuff, old-fashioned storytelling. I love it, bro. Omar, you're killing it. You're passionate. You're the man, bro. I, I really appreciate having you today just to talk about a little bit about comics and your, your current projects, what we could expect, what you've done. And just, you know, chilling, man. I mean, I, I, I've seen you all over the place. And, and of course, I also want to thank you for your uh, likes and support on LinkedIn as oh, well. Of course. See, I'm getting, I'm trying to educate myself, if you will. <laughs> uh, you're the man, Al. You're doing great work. Well, I'm trying to be, just be a better version of myself. That way I could be a better person for, you know, and leader for the team. And not just that, hopefully, you know, with the knowledge I've, ga I've, I've gained, you know, be just a better host and, and promoter of people like yourself that are doing amazing things for us as well. I mean, you're a Latino. You're, you're like repping us, and I thank you for that. Uh, you're one of the few that I've gotten to, to speak to that are, you know, of, of my background. You know, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, you're Mexican, hablamos español, so eso no importa, it doesn't matter. We speak the same language at the end of the day. And, todo lo mismo. Um, yeah, exactly, todo lo mismo. And I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you for, for taking that journey and taking that task upon yourself to showcase us and be like, yeah, we're here too. I, it means a lot to me. And yeah, I we're hope showcasing that other each Latinos other, man. Yeah, yeah, we're man. showcasing each other, right? Like... Uh... When uh, when that Mañana project went down, you know, I was hyping up everybody else, right? When I see one of my people out there hustling, doing a Kickstarter, I, you know, I try to pump them up, right? Like, it, it's it's all good. We can all win. There's a spot for all of us, right? Like, <laughs> there's, there's no need to, uh, to be competitive, especially because everybody's kind of got their own stories, right? Nobody yeah, can do... Too. Nobody can do my stories like me, and I can't do stories like somebody else, right? That's why we're all unique, have a unique voice, vision, perspective. Like, I don't do horror comics. I don't do Westerns, right? I, I do sci-fi. That's my thing, right? And I know there's plenty of other guys out there that can do all those other genres. So, so that's why I think there's room for all of us. Like we were just talking about, there's so many publishers out there. there yeah. With technology nowadays, you know, you don't even need a publisher. So, like, no. come on in. Everybody's welcome. Let's all have a hug and a beer and go make some comics. Please, yo, yeah. Let, I'll I'll drink to that. Salud, mi gente. <laughs> <laughs> Salud. So Omar, where can me have to follow you? Because I know it's the Crusader with the Z. Yeah, yes, that's right. Crusaders, Crusader again. Coño. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're family, man. Definitely brothers from another mother. Yeah, man. Love it. So 
Let them know. Let them know, Omar, where can they follow you? One-stop shopping, man. Go to my website, theforcemedia.com. That has all the links to all my social media, The Crusader on Twitter, The Crusader on uh, Instagram. Um, I've got the Tumblr. I've got the Pinterest. I got, you know, LinkedIn, if you want to hit me up there. Uh, my gaming handle is omorales81. That's, oh, you know, wait a that, minute. you know, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. I got to know that. I got to know before <laughs> we go then. That, you know, you're giving out your gaming handle. <laughs> What's your go-to game? Where, where can where can you be very braggadocious about and say you cannot beat me in this game? Is Damn, there dude. a game that, it, that, it, you, it that might, you hold your swag on? You're like, you ain't messing <laughs> with me here. It, it, it might be pro wrestling on the NES, man. Oh, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> oh bro. The one I'll tell you for me. Was the WCW versus NWO on the N64? Damn. If we do that boy at a Royale, you ain't getting into the ring. <laughs> you're gonna get cheesed the whole time. Come in, <laughs> home. You get a clothesline. Get out. Get out. <laughs> uh, awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah, wrestling was also kind of an influence on me growing up too, right? The, I would the hope show. So. The showmanship, right? Because because look, anybody who's an indie is a, a carnival barker, right? You got to get oh, yeah. out there and get attention. And, yes. and and growing up watching, you know, Macho and Hogan and Roddy Piper and all those guys, it, it taught you how to be a bit of a showman. So when you're out at the convention floor and you're hand selling your books and you're trying to get it, you know, people to come to your table and buy your stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you oh, gotta have God. a little bit of that entertainer in you. I love it, man. Yeah, those were the good old days of wrestling when they used to have those great sketches, man. You know, that Roddy Piper, I got to see him a, a few months before he passed at a convention. Um, God so I was on it. Yeah, man. I've seen uh, Bret Hart right next to me. That motherfucker is two me's side by side. That's a big man. You know, like, I'm good, bro. I ain't getting. You want a beer, please? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yo, big dude. Um, who else? Um, oh, once, once, brother, I got to see when I worked at in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I worked by the uh, Beacon Theater. After work one day, as I walk right by the theater, you know who's there? Vince, Stephanie, and Triple H. Wow, bro. Just out. Yeah, they were about to just go in, but they were just hanging out outside, like bullshitting. Yeah. Right, before right, going right. in, and I'm, yo, these people are you. Even Stephanie was humongous. That's not one lady I'd mess with. Let me tell you. And they were so cool. I was like, yo, what's up? They're like, yo, hey. I'm like, oh shit, they're awesome. <laughs> You're not lying, dude. One time I was in in Las Vegas, and I was like walking around like a casino, like at three in the morning or something, and I bumped into that tennis player Anna Kornikova, and she was big, man. She was like tall <laughs> and like strong and like she's Yo. like signed to, signed to autograph for me and i was just like wow this woman is like, big and strong can you please <laughs> sign it right Yo, shit. <laughs> Yo, i get it man but, you know but bless them too man for the entertainment value and all they put their bodies through hell especially if you mm -hmm. watch the dark side of the ring god damn mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. fucking me up i can't believe yep. the stories yeah. that our old school wrestlers you know lived if you will oh yeah i love those documentaries man that's good stuff it is. Well, hopefully that, that's that's the next thing. I want to see an alien documentary of an alien wrestler inspired by Omar oh, Morales. There you go. An ooh. alien wrestler. There you go, bro. <laughs> the juices are flowing now. <laughs> there you go, man. From, from, from a whole planet that's a Latino and all they do is eat Spanish food. There's no other well, type of food but Spanish food on the whole planet. How about this, man? The, the, the wrestler wears the mascara, right? So no one knows he's an alien. But then one there day somebody takes it off and we see... The yeah, because <laughs> on his planet, he would get the old school wrestling because, you know, everything is on yeah, delayed oh, radio frequency. Right. So he gets inspired by Mil Mascaras. That's right. right Mil that. Mascaras, El Santo. El that's Santo. Oh, shit. There we go. <laughs> folks, we, yo, there we go. I'm not, I'm not Stan Lee's. That's all you, brother. If you do that shit, just, just, just name one of the wrestlers out mega, even if I'm getting my ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all, right. all right all right all right Omega's in there awesome omar thank you again bro you're amazing keep doing what you do keep supporting you, the man. community you're amazing in the independent creators you know check out omar check out his kickstarter list because he definitely has great recommendations 
of amazing books that he's actually backed up. But not just that, he's created two amazing books thus far. He has another one, you know, coming up. You know, check out, you know, the Scout Comics stuff because Scout Comics is an amazing independent uh, label right now, do, you know, handling their business. So, Omar, thank you again. You know, what was it? It was The Force Media. TheForceMedia.com, yeah, and, and you know, get get out to your local shop, ask them for the Lunar Ladies, number one, two, and go. three. Hook me up. Thank you. Appreciate the support, everybody. There you go. And now you know how we do it. Uh, thank you for tuning in, hanging out, you know, checking us out. One more thank you again. Make sure to check out ComicCrusaders.com, UndercoverCapes.com, and please visit the Google Play Store and download the Comic Crusaders app today. You know, be a one, one-stop shop for all things Comic Crusaders. Uh, we're going to have some great shows next week. And during the course of the week, tomorrow we got Old Timers, an uh, awesome show. So make sure to check everything out. And we have another lecture coming up. You wouldn't believe who Johnny the Machine is going to be talking to on outside the panels real soon. It's definitely going to impress the crap out of you because that means we keep landing legends like Alan and this future legend right here. All right? So with that, I'm out, Mega. And I'm out. Wepa! Hasta la próxima, mi gente. Much love. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 